So a common question that I get from newer pollers is how can I get stronger from pole when I'm away from pole? Um, whether you don't have a pole at home, you only get to go to class maybe once a week, twice a week, whatever it is. What are some things that you can do that are going to help you on your pole journey without access to a pole? Okay, so this tutorial is for you. Have a list of some moves that you can do from home, from anywhere, outside, while you're traveling, all those things, no equipment needed. And then I also have a few things that you can do with some minimal equipment, equipment that you can find in a muggle gym, you know, a regular gym, um, or in a park, okay? Just using a pull-up bar and maybe one or two other things and that's it. So let's get started. Okay, so. Our first one in our no equipment needed exercises is going to be leg raises or leg crunches, okay? Pull climbs and pull inverts are two of those huge milestone markers in pull and something that so many pullers struggle with. So this is going to help you with both of those. So for these, no equipment needed, just a little space that you can lay down. You can do these inside, outside, wherever, okay? With these, you wanna make sure that you're not arching up on these. Try to find a neutral spine, okay? So wherever you are when you're relaxed, try to think of shortening the distance between your pubic bone and belly button. And then from here, either straight leg raises or depending on where you're at on your strength journey, bent leg, okay? And if the bent leg still feels too much, try alternating legs, and that's also okay. You can go from toe taps, alternating, okay? So your level one progression would be toe taps. Level two would be one leg at a time, okay? Both legs at a time, bent, and then both legs at a time, straight, okay? So there's a few variations there for you on that. Okay, so that's gonna help with those abdominal muscles, also those hip flexors, because like I said, those hip flexors, hey, I cannot talk. Hip flexors also play a big role in our climbs and our inverts. Okay, this next one, taking it to the next level. Apparently, Loki's here to share his toys with you as well. Come here, buddy. Can you maybe bring it back over here? Loki would really like to do a tutorial with you all. Okay, so this next one is a candlestick. Um, I hear it called that in the gymnastics world. I'm sure there's also other names for it. For this one, I highly recommend, if you have it, is lay down with a couch right here and put your hands underneath the couch. You can use anything like a bed, a couch, um, a dresser. Just make sure that it is heavy enough that you're not going to pull it down on top of yourself. But you're going to just tuck your hands underneath it. Okay, and then from there, we're going to go from not only a straight leg raise, but a shoot up. Okay, so if you don't have anything to put your hands on here, you can have your hands to the side, and that's a good place to start. But eventually, you want to go to be able to have your hands overhead because this mimics a lot more pole moves as far as the alignment of how we're engaging the muscles on this one. Okay, so it can be a bent leg and then a push up, or it can be a straight leg and then a push up, okay? So we're thinking of trying to get the legs, the toes up towards the ceiling. So it's not just those regular abdominal muscles, but we're getting a little bit extra oomph into it, pushing that up towards the ceiling, okay? So we've got our leg raises, we've got our candlesticks. Next one up is going to be our side plank, okay? So for this one, don't underestimate the power of the side plank. There's so many moves in pull where we've gotta be able to have that bottom arm pushing away. And the closest that we can come to mimicking that is working this side plank, okay? Um, if you have sensitive wrists, you can do this on a forearm, absolutely, because it's still going to help strengthen your shoulder, your core muscles, so many other components that go into this. But if you can, try to do it with a straight arm. But once again, listen to your body, okay? Work with what your body needs. So for this one, you can have the bottom leg bent into it. That's going to be a level one here. Level two is going to be having that bottom leg straight. So both are straight. This top arm can be wherever you want. The thing you want to focus on is not sinking into this shoulder, but pushing out of it. Okay, so a good exercise you can do with this is kind of sink your hips, push up, sink your hips, push up. Okay, so on each side. So like I said, you can do these on the forearm. You could do it with the bottom leg bent, bottom leg straight. Both are going to be fantastic. I would say either work on a certain time limit of holds, maybe a 30 second hold on each side, or reps of dropping the hips and going up, whichever works best for you, okay? So this fourth one that we're gonna have is going to be, and I'm gonna give you a little progression. It can either be an L handstand using the wall, or if you're comfortable with handstand, a regular handstand, 
or a downward dog, okay? And once again, this is something in pole, eventually down the road, you might be a beginner pole right, puller right now and you're like, oh, I don't even need to be going upside down. I don't need my arms to be strength, strong overhead like that. But eventually down the road in pole, you will want to go upside down. And if you're already strengthening those muscles, you're going to be ahead of the curve, okay? So a downward dog position, as I'm here, okay, I want to think of pushing the floor away. I don't want to be sinking into my shoulders. I want to push. So on these, I would recommend just doing hold. So push, hold, maybe for 15 to 30 seconds, and then relax and come down and do another one. Okay, so it's going to help with that overhead push. Those of you that eventually are working towards butterflies, handsprings, that kind of thing on the pole, this becomes super important. Okay, so that would be your level one is to do it in a downward dog. And of course, if you have tight hamstrings, those legs can have a little bend to them. If you're looking to kind of level it up even more, it would be taking it to an L hold with the wall, which means you're going to put your feet on the wall. Now you're going to be in that L hold of your hands and your hips to find their stack. Okay, so the more your hips go over your head in a stack fashion, the more strenuous the exercise is going to be, okay? So we have either a downward dog progression or taking it to the L hold, or like I said, if you're someone that's already comfortable with handstands, whether that's kicking up into the wall or something like that, you're welcome to do that as well. And those would also be good. So here's some great ones for no equipment needed, just around the house. You can do them outside at the park. You can do them inside the house. You can do them at the gym. You can do them on vacation try adding these in, okay? So we had our leg raises, our candlesticks, our side planks, and our downward dog or L stance. Pick a number, do the same amount on each side if they do have two sides to them, okay? Listen to your body. I would recommend starting with maybe 15 to 30 seconds and focus on quality over quantity, especially like for those side planks. I would rather you do five side planks of, you know, holds, maybe the, the side drops and you're pushing out of your shoulder the entire time, then try to do 27 and you're stinking into your shoulder the whole time because A, you're building bad habits, B, you're potentially injuring your shoulders. So let's not do that. Okay, so I do have one more little bonus, no equipment needed exercise, although it does require a doorway, okay? So if you have a doorway in your house, it can be big, it can be small, it can be the doorway to your bathroom, doorway to your bedroom, doorway to the front of your house, whichever. Um, we use a lot of leg holds, knee hooks in pull, which requires a lot of hamstring strength. And it's not the same as doing a hamstring curl in the gym. Does a hamstring curl in the gym help? Sure, but it's not the same. So this is a great one to help you start developing the strength and confidence for so many of those leg holds. So all you need is a doorway. This is an exceptionally wide one. And I would say the wider the doorway is, the more challenging it's gonna be, okay? You're gonna place your foot at the base of it. The closer your foot is to the base of it, the more challenging it's gonna be. Then, and this is my outside leg. My inside leg, I'm gonna hook my knee so it goes to the other side of the wall and hold, and then try to go hands-free, okay? And you can either do crunches here, sitting up into it, or if these are new to you and this feels scary, just hang out here and sing a song. So those are what I like to call Cupid crunches or Cupid holds, okay? And those are gonna be great for helping us develop that leg strength and confidence. So for those, either work on if they're new to you, maybe a 10 second hold, or if you're adding the crunches in, maybe five or 10 crunches on each side. All right, let's go to some exercises that require minimal equipment for these. All you need is a pull-up bar. And I know not everyone has a pull-up bar. That's not necessarily so simple. If you have a pull-up bar, great. You're already ahead of the game. If you don't have a pull-up bar, quite often gyms have them and an assisted pull-up in the gym absolutely works. Um, there's also some great doorway pull-up bar options. I'm gonna include those in the links below if you are interested in some of those. Um, also, quite often you can find pull-up bars at parks. Sometimes they're part of the play structure and that's okay. Did you know you actually can go do pull-ups on the play structure and that's okay. So on these, um, we're gonna go through these with some minimal equipment needed and break down a few moves that will help you also on your pull journey. Okay, so this next little set of exercise does require some equipment. You are going to need a pull-up bar. 
Okay, so if you currently have a pull-up bar, awesome, you're ahead of the game. If you do not have a, a pull-up bar currently, you have options. Um, I'm gonna include a link below for Amazon link for a pull-up bar that goes in a doorway. Depending on your doorway, it doesn't work for everyone. Also, quite often you can find pull-up bars that are out in different places around where you live, in parks, calisthenics parks, things like that. I'll also include a link below with some resources to help you find some of those. There's an app that I use sometimes when I'm traveling to find parks that have bars in them. Also, children's parks quite often have bars in them. And if you go during school hours, quite often, those parks are empty and you can use the pull-up bar. So for these, like I said, you do need a pull-up bar. To start with, shoulder shrugs, okay? Something that's huge in pull, if you're a new pull, you probably hear your instructor say all the time, engage your shoulders. What does that mean? Okay, so for this, and once again, I'm not going super in detail on all of these, you're gonna hang with your hands about shoulder width apart. You can have your thumbs wrapped or unwrapped. There's different schools of thought on that, okay? You're gonna work on hanging to start. This is gonna be good for strengthening your grip strength as well as your shoulders. And then from here, you're going to shrug. So I pull up and out of my shoulders. I control sinking back down into my shoulders. I pull up and out of my shoulders. I sink back down into my shoulders. And when I'm pulling up into my shoulders, what I'm thinking about doing is the outer edge of my armpit. Instead of it pointing that way, I wanna pull it so it points forward. How forward it points is gonna be different for everyone, okay? So maybe do five, 10 of these. If these are new to you, feel free to keep your feet on the ground. Or if your pull-up bar is too far away from the ground, put a chair there so you can put your feet on it, okay? So better to have full range of motion on those shoulders with your feet on the ground than to have your feet off the ground and feel like you can't go anywhere, okay? So shoulder shrugs, double arm, single arm, also good. Definitely do the single arms with your feet supported by something. If these are newer to you, you want to work up to doing the single arm, but they're really good for your grip strength. And I don't know about you, grip strength is definitely something I struggle with and pull. Okay, so we've got our shrugs. Next, similar to our leg raises that we were doing on the floor, but now we're taking them to a little higher level, literally and figuratively. So you're going to start hanging, legs on the ground, depending on where you are at strength-wise, same progressions that we had for the floor ones. You can alternate legs, little bent. You can go both legs bent. You can go both legs straight, okay? So leg raises are going to be great ones to work on strengthening for pull. You've got three little progressions right there, okay? Now, that's working this direction, but as you probably have already figured out in pull, Pull goes in a lot of directions, not just to the front. We go to the side, we go to the back, we go to all things, okay? So next one is gonna be add a little side crunch. So you can do these with your legs on the ground if these are newer to you, but eventually you wanna be able to hold up and it's gonna be crunch to the center, crunch to the center, okay? And what I think about in these, I think about shortening the distance between my hip to my armpit, and my goal is to get my butt crack to point over to the side, to the window, to the wall, okay? If these are new to you, chances are when you go to do that first crunch, you're gonna be like, it didn't go very far. That's normal. Be patient with yourself. These muscles take time to develop, okay? Most of us don't start out with them being strong and coordinated. It takes time. Be patient with yourself. Just put the work in consistently and it will come. Okay, so for our hanging bar exercises, we had our shrugs double and or working up to single. We had our leg raises, we had our side to side, and then this last one, fourth, is going to be pull-ups, okay? And before you poo-poo me and say, oh, I don't do pull-ups, highly recommend, if you don't have one already, is getting yourself a band, okay? Whether you're using these for pull-ups or there's a ton of exercises on the pull that they're also great for. Um, this one particular is made by Rubber Bandits. I'm gonna put links down below for these. And there's different widths, depending on how much support you want. They do have a pull kit in there that includes like three bands. I would highly recommend getting that one because different moves, you're gonna want more support. And throughout your pull journey, you're gonna need different support, okay? So for this, you're going to wrap it around the pole and wrap it through itself. And then now you have this handy dandy loop here, which you can then either A, put a knee in or a foot in, depending on how much support you want. And you're gonna use this now to do your pull-ups. You're gonna start from that hang, shrugging the shoulders. Exhale as you bring your chin up to the bar and bringing it back down, okay? Being careful you don't zap yourself with the band when you come out. 
If you do not have a band, either A, just not in the stars for you right now, or you've ordered one that just hasn't arrived yet, a great substitute for an assisted pull-up is to use something to step on. Okay, um, I'd recommend using a chair since I don't happen to have one at the moment, but I do have a handy dandy set of stall bars right here. Picture this is a seat right here. Put a foot on your chair. It'll probably be lower than this. And then that way you can use your legs to help you on your pull up. Okay, that way your arms are still working, but you're able to make that full range of motion movement because you're able to use the assist of your legs. Okay, all right, so we have four exercises, no equipment needed. We have four exercises, minimal equipment needed for you to do to help you strengthen for your pole journey. No pole needed. Also, on that note, this is not just for polers. This is for aerialists as well, okay? Because all aerial apparatuses use a lot of the same muscles that we're touching on in this, okay? So for all these exercises, I didn't give you numbers. I didn't give you reps. I would recommend listening to your body. My general rule of thumb on things, if something is new, start out with three to five of them. Do three to five, see how you feel at the end. If they felt good and you did all the other exercises, circle back, do another three to five. Okay, so if you did three to five and you're like, oh, that was way too easy, maybe go to 10. Don't start out with 57, okay? Start out with the progressions. If those feel okay, move to the next level. Listen to your body, okay? I do not subscribe to the no pain, no gain mantra. I am more of the live to train another day. Take care of your body as much as you can so it will last and you can continue to train another day because this stuff is fun. But if we're not kind to our bodies and doing our best to not injure them, they're not gonna continue to work for us. Okay, so try these exercises out. Let me know how it goes. I would love to hear any thoughts that you have on these. And of course, keep in mind, this is not a complete list. There are many more exercises. Um, should any of you have an interest in doing more of a deep dive into pole conditioning exercises, you can find a link below where you can sign up for either my beginner or my intermediate. Um, I will send you a PDF of, and it's totally 100% free, of pole exercises that you can do on the pole for conditioning. These were all off the pole. So if you're like, okay, cool, but now I have a pole and I wanna do more on the pole, check those lists out in the links below. Once again, that's a great free resource for you. If you wanna dive even deeper than that, feel free to reach out to me or check the links below for my online training program, as well as virtual training resources for one-on-one -on -one training as well. So I hope you gained some little tidbits, little nuggets of wisdom to help you on your pole journey. Best of luck to you and excited to see your progress. So I hope these exercises are helpful for you. I didn't go into detail breakdown of what's going on with all these, the muscle engagement, all those minute little details of it. This is just meant to be mostly a list of things for you to work on. Should you want to dive deeper into them, that is always an option. Feel free to reach out to me about some of my online training programs and virtual training options. For these moves, please, pullers, keep in mind, our bodies are all different, okay? We all progress, grow strength-wise, coordination-wise at our own pace, okay? So don't compare your, your journey to someone else's. How long will it take you to get an invert? The person who started the same day as you might get it faster. They might get it slower than you, okay? Our bodies are all different. So don't take it personally. The one thing that you can control is how consistently you work towards that. So I would encourage you to implement these exercises that we've gone over here once or twice a week into your training routine. They might only be for 10 to 15 minutes, and that can make a huge difference. So I highly recommend if you are hoping to accelerate accelerate your progression and pull and working towards some of your pull goals is to add these exercises in. Like I said, it can just be once a week, twice a week, three times a week, depending on how much time you're getting to pull um, and not pull to be able to work on these. So I hope these have been helpful for you. Best of luck to you on your pull journey and make sure to keep coming back for more tutorials and training tips every week.